artistic disguises guns and hostages and the difficulty in trying to resell stolen artwork as it will be well communicated and a one-of-a-kind object. An easier process is fraud. Even with all the technology designed to verify artworks, there are still lots of convincing fakes still on display in museums around the world. The uncovering of fakes by committees comprised of the descendants of the artist is increasingly common and has prompted one of Britain's foremost art historians to condemn the methods used by scholars to authenticate works as a professional disgrace. Martin Kemp, shown here, Emeritus Professor of Art History at Oxford University and a Leonardo expert, said many rely on dubious data and that a chaotic approach is used to attribute paintings. He said he was alarmed at the ease with which historical, visual and scientific evidence is manipulated to suit the overriding objectives, which were enhancing the academic reputations or boosting financial rewards and attributing paintings to particular masters. Now, there are a number of ways to verify, and many of these are non-invasive, like UV fluorescence, optical microscope, x-rays, infrared photography. Um, none of these my students had access to. In one of the possible fakes, Martin Kemp looked closely at the shading. It seemed to have been drawn with a left hand, just as Leonardo had done. Not only had the drawing apparently been done with left-handed strokes, the artist, like Leonardo, had relied on the palm of his hand as a way of softening the shading. Martin Kemp made a habit of cataloging the mistakes of Leonardo's imitators and forgers, such as an inadvertent right-hand brushstroke. So this is the inspiration for my project. Um, Dr. Um, El Gamal from Rutgers University in the Atelier for Restoration and Research of Paintings in the Netherlands documents how their system broke down almost 300 line drawings by Picasso, Matisse, Medigliani, and other famous artists into 80,000 individual strokes. Then a deep recurrent neural network learned what features in the strokes were important to identify the artist. Now, I could ask all of you to try to identify the forgeries in this group, and I assume you would have a difficult time. Dr. Al Gamal, or at least his network, would not. 80,000 strokes is more than we can accomplish in our smaller project, but we can learn something about using data to detect art forgeries. We can analyze left hand and right handed artists and see if we can spot a forgery. Left handed artists usually make marks from the upper left to the lower right, right-handed artists usually make marks from the upper right to the lower left. This is because the natural movement of the fingers, wrist, and arm to swing away from the body rather than jab forward and back. As an Adobe campus, students can use Photoshop for free and analyze the lines in a drawing. Look at the blue short line a student traced over the original on the nose. The upper endpoint of this line, identified as a yellow dot, is mapped as an XY coordinate shown in the red circle. Changing the color helps students separate the different lines as they progress with the project. They note the beginning and ending points of 30 different lines. They enter them into a prepared spreadsheet that then calculated slope, degree, and finally a binary handedness where number one signifies right handedness and a zero signifies left handedness. And I received a great deal of help from the CADS team building this formula. So, what artwork will we examine? I chose the left handed artist, Carrie James Marshall, born in 1955. And his subject matter of his drawings, paintings, and installations and public projects is drawn from African American culture and rooted in the geography of his upbringing. So, one of these is a fraud. While it is almost impossible to prove the authentic drawing, you can be very persuasive using your data to argue that one is an imposter. Quadrants have been created over each drawing. This will make the gathering of data easier by dividing the workload from all the students. Each student was responsible for 30 lines in their assigned quadrant from each drawing. They analyzed and entered the coordinates into the spreadsheet. Carrie James Marshall is left-handed, 
the imposter is right-handed. Contour lines may need to move all around facial features in all directions and provide a false negative, but in the lines of the shading of the lights and the darks on the face, we often see the handedness of the artist betrayed. It may seem daunting at first to map and compare these lines, but students traced over 30 lines of their choice and used alternating colors to remember and separate lines as they comb through the quadrant. Here's one student's results. The left page is for the left artist. The right page is for the right artist. And if you will look at the column H on the left-hand side and see the overwhelming number of zeros, and then if you look at the column H on the right-hand side with the overwhelming numbers of one, this student was able to conclude Carrie James Marshall was on the left side and the right side was the fraud. Dr. Betts, a little less than two minutes. Thank you. Data gave me a new angle on teaching visual awareness and using a slow paced study of artwork without using many of the worn historical approaches made institutionalized by the European male heritage of the traditional art appreciation class. This fall, data became the authority rather than me. I could remove my real or perceived preferences completely from the lesson and let data tell the story. Thank you very much. Great job, really appreciate that and the presentation. And now we've got a time for a minute or two for some questions. Great job, Dr. Betts. I'm curious, uh, is the trend now moved to, uh, in terms of evaluating whether or not something's a fraud, to move to neural networks versus the committees, the expert committees you mentioned? Well. This is a new area for me. I'm very old fashioned, but AI does seem to be the future in that the artworks, if you can imagine a uh, 1530 painting in a church in some European city needs to be taken off a wall and shipped to Bern, Switzerland or wherever to be analyzed and then the Best ways to figure this out can be chemical, which can damage the artwork, not only in transit, but then. So for the ability to take a picture and have AI analyze all of these directions of lines to be able to prove that it's a fraud, which is often the goal, rather than being able to prove that it's the original or, or that it's authentic. And so this is something that a lot of people are, are, are worried about, that the collections in their uh, galleries and, and museums will somehow now be known as this is not really a Da Vinci. Great, maybe one more. If someone's got one more question, then it's time to play the game again. Oh, I see one of the, let me read from the chat. Do you plan on extending this study to paintings? I, uh, yes, what you can imagine is that with the very um, sort of finite area of a pencil, uh, it's easier to find a beginning and an ending point. But when you have something like a brush that has all of these hairs and a variety of sizes of brushes, it does create a better fingerprint for the artist, but it creates a higher challenge for the students at the level that we're working. But yes, um, painting, um, every type of artwork that betrays a hand movement can be studied in AI and be able to be attributed as a forgery or potentially uh, original.